What is up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and recently several people have asked me what my process is for planning and then building projects or applications. So I figured I would put this video together with a list of tips and suggestions that maybe will help you do that. If you don't know who I am, I run a YouTube channel called James Q. Quick, where I do videos on web development and JavaScript. So go and check that out. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. All right, as developers or aspiring developers or learning developers, I think a lot of us have ideas for things we would like to build, but we rarely actually take those things to fruition. We rarely actually finish those projects, no matter how good the ideas are. And I can say for me personally, I have like a backlog in uh, Trello of just like all of these ideas that I would like to build if at some point I have time. And I can tell you, I've started on many of them and then not finished. And that's something that I want to do better about myself, but is also something I think people in the community seem to kind of share a similar question. So I'm going to break this down into kind of two categories. One is just kind of the planning, like before you actually do any sort of execution, what do you need to think about in terms of planning for a project? And then the other side of that is actually building and some of the logistical things to help you get through that way. Is there any way I can turn off sound on an iPad? iPad gone. All right. So first think about what is your general idea? You might have that already. You might say, Hey, I want to build an app that does X either to help yourself or help somebody else or whatever. That's great. Some of the things you need to consider with your general idea. One, who is the audience? Who is this going to be used by? Is it something that is just for you? I built a Chrome extension recently that most likely will only be used for me because all it does is show me recent links to my YouTube videos so that I can copy them and share them easier than going to YouTube, clicking on the channel, clicking on a video and copying the link. So that is probably something that only I am going to use. So there's there's implications behind that. I don't care as much about what it looks like. I don't care as much about the documentation for it. It's just for me so I can just go in and use it myself because I know what it's for. If you're creating something for other people, do you know what type of person you're creating this for? And have you talked to that type of person or a few people in that category to understand, yes, this thing actually fits your needs or their needs and take in their input into what they would like to see in this application as well. So going around and, and doing like either formal or informal surveys to get an idea of what you're working on. Now, this is not too serious. If you're working on just a side project that's not meant to grow to be a bigger thing, you may not need to do that, but you might ask some questions. The other part of the planning is thinking about what is your personal goal? What do you want to get out of this project? Are you looking to make money? Are you looking for uh, just hands-on experience of something to like learn and then put on your portfolio? Are you looking to just kind of build something fun and share with the community? Think about what it is you want to get out of this and that can help you kind of define goals along the way. At a certain point in a month, I want to feel comfortable doing X, working with MongoDB, for example, if if this is a learning opportunity for you. If you want to make money, you can set a goal for in six months, I want to have earned $50 or $100 and then six months later get to $1,000, whatever that is, you can start to think about what is it that you want to get out of this project and then uh, kind of make your specific goals according to that. And I think another another good idea here is can you give yourself some deadlines? I, for one, and probably lots of us, probably consider ourselves to be procrastinators. And it's been this way since elementary school, through high school, through college. If I have a deadline, I will get the thing done by that deadline. Other than that, I probably push it off till very close to that deadline. I think a lot of us are like that. Some of us are not. Some of us are more organized and prepared. But if you give yourself a deadline, if you give yourself a reason to be accountable, you're probably more likely to actually finish uh, whatever milestone it is that you've defined and then get to the end project. Another great way to do this is to get into an accountability group, to tell people, share it on Twitter, say, I, my plan is to have this thing created in an MVP format in three months from now or three weeks from now or six months from now, whatever your goal is, whatever your deadline is, define that and share it. Shout it from the rooftop so the other people know they might ask you questions to check in and they might help keep you accountable. Now, you can also get more specific if you know someone one on one or you're in a discord group or a Slack uh, group that you want to kind of share that with. You can do that more directly with those people as well. All right. So we talked about thinking about your idea, your audience, what it is you want to get out of it, setting some deadlines, the next part. And this is the most difficult part for people. Having taught a boot camp myself, having looked at people trying to do their finished uh, capstone projects at the end of that boot camp, 
the number one thing that people will struggle with is focusing on MVP features. We have ideas for applications. We want to do so many things. In reality, to get something done, you probably need to cut that back by 50% or 60% and just get things started. Get things rolling. It's really easy, and I've done this myself, to get started and have this really big idea in front of you and then get overwhelmed and feel like you can't do it all, and then you stop. You don't want to set yourself up for failure. So focus on those MVP features. Remember we uh, mentioned earlier about talking to your audience. This is where people can really help you gauge what things are most important. Now, you don't have to go out and make a big deal about it, but you might have a friend or two that you can ask some questions. Hey, if there was this application that did uh, the goal was to do X, what things would you expect to see in there? And what things would you have to have before it would make sense to use it? A lot of the things that we want, features that we want to add to applications really just become extra when you're focused on getting something done. You can add the likes, you can add direct messages, you can add a social connect, you can add the gamification, you can add all of those things later. Get your core functionality, the thing that's really core to your business or your product or your app or whatever it is, and then define those features, but also at the same time, define those as your MVP and think of this as stages. Like these are the things I need immediately, but longer term, these are the features I would like to add as well. So you start to break it down into like, here's what I have to have first. And then, so I don't lose track of ideas. Here's what kind of goes in the backlog. And along that same idea, like as you, I guess this is starting to get into the execution side of this is focus on one thing at a time. If you break down your features and you break them down into stories, we'll call them or whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter. But if you break them down into backlog items, focus on one at a time. Take that story, take that backlog item. And I uh, really work on that one until it's finished and then go on to the next one. And a couple of execution tips here, things that you might be able to use. I personally use Trello to track a bunch of different things, but especially for my YouTube videos, all of my videos, backlog, video backlogs are listed inside of Trello. So I can go, I can look at my Trello board. I can see the things that I'm working on, the things that I have in the backlog, and then the things that I'm accomplished. Small tip here, if you have a column for um, things that you've accomplished or things that you've completed, it's kind of a feel good feeling for yourself. Is that a thing? Feel good feeling. It's a nice feeling to have to see that you've accomplished things. So give yourself a little mental boost by tracking the things that you've accomplished along the way. So I use Trello to track mine. If you're a developer, you could go into GitHub and you can track things with GitHub issues and GitHub projects. Uh, this is something that I recently just went through and kind of asked for feedback from people on something I was working on and recorded all of those items inside of GitHub issues, attached them to a GitHub project. Go and check this out if you haven't. And it's basically a Kanban board that now I can share for myself, but anyone else that's interested in participating. And this is, uh, I think, a cool piece of feedback or idea for you as well as you build a project. You don't have to do it all by yourself. The beauty of open source, the beauty of communities, the beauty of being connected to people on Twitter and Discord is that you've got friends and people around you that might be interested in helping as well. They can bring additional skill sets. They can bring different aspects and ideas that you may not have considered. So I would always recommend at the very least talking to someone or a few people about it and then maybe getting them to help out as well. If you do things on GitHub with issues, you can take PRs, you can still maintain or be the final decision maker on what goes into the code, but you can have other people contribute as well. One of the things I don't wanna discourage people from, I want to encourage you if it's appropriate, is don't feel like you can't follow a tutorial. We talk a lot about tutorial hell where people just go through and they follow tutorials. And if you get stuck in that, you're not really growing because you're not building stuff yourself. But if you're learning and your goal is to learn, you might start with a tutorial. That's a reasonable thing to do. I don't want to discourage that. So if you're learning something new, start with a tutorial. But when you finish that, then take the things you learn, those skills, those concepts, and apply them to something a little bit different. If you build a to-do app, change it up in the tutorial from the tutorial, and now build a grocery shopping list app. Whatever it is that you want to build, just tweak it, change it so that you kind of help reinforce the things that uh, you learn. So as you start to take stories and things, I one of the things before that actually I want you to do is to do a design. Now design doesn't need to be a really fancy thing. It could be a sketch. You can take your pen and paper and you can sketch it out on a notepad. This is what I do with almost everything that I build. 
And from there, you can kind of get a feel for like, how does navigation work? What screen do you go to from this screen to the next screen? And what does this action do? You get a feel for the application and you start to kind of realize really quickly, oh, I, it doesn't quite work the way I thought it would. You can take that to the next level. You can take your, your just hand drawings and you can take that to something like Figma or Sketch and actually be able to lay that out in a design tool to really then be able to see uh, what the application, the project is gonna look like. Now for me as a developer, one of the biggest things that I struggle with that I actively am trying to get better at is being more creative with design and making things look really good. If I were working on a project, I would really want to have some help from a designer because it's very easy for, for me to implement a design that someone has given me versus me come up with a design and then build it myself. So this goes back to the idea of maybe you want to bring somebody in to, with a complementary skill set to help you get to your goal. I can work so much faster if someone else does the design. And then I don't have that overwhelming feeling of like, I don't know what I'm doing design wise. And that has been a reason I've gotten stuck many times in the past. So again, don't feel bad about like bringing other people in to contribute. And the last uh, little piece of the execution phase is after you build a couple of features, ship it, those MVP features, ship it and get people to try it out and then get the feedback and then look in your backlog and out of the features that you thought you wanted to add, do those features still make sense? And also if they do make sense, are they then prioritized against potential new features that other people are asking for? Again, if you're building something to try to grow and get people to use it, it really matters what those people think. If you're just building something for yourself, great, just do that and you know what you want and you know what you need. If you're building something for other people, take their feedback into account and reprioritize the items that are in your backlog. I think this is one of the things that often gets overlooked in Agile is things change, right? That's what Agile, That's what being Agile is, is you take this feedback and then based on that, you determine what are your most important features going forward. So hopefully some of those tips helped. I wanna do a quick recap here of the two kind of different categories of just planning and then executing on your uh, actual project. So uh, planning, just kind of think about different factors. Who's the audience? What's your goal? What do you wanna get out of this? What are the MVP features, those core features that you need to be able to get started and you can actually execute on? Also give yourself timelines, deadlines. This helps me a lot. And then once you start executing, you start to do these things. You can track your backlog items in Trello and GitHub. You can uh, follow a tutorial if you need to. That's absolutely fine. But then after you finish a tutorial, change it up for your learning experience and do something a little bit different. In terms of execution, I love bringing other people in for either advice, for feedback, or to actually do some of the legwork for me. I think it's fun to have somebody to work with. And then also you bring somebody in that hopefully has complementary skill sets that can do some of the stuff that may not be as natural for you. And you can both kind of create something fun together. Lastly, do, do a design. Design the thing in a sketch. At the very least, just draw it, draw it out on a piece of notebook paper. You'll get a feel for how the application flows and that sort of stuff. So those are my tips for how to one plan and then execute on building a project or an application. Hopefully you enjoyed those. If you have any other tips or ideas that you would like to share, throw those in the comments and make sure to like the video and subscribe to Traversy Media on YouTube so that you can see the next videos that come out from some of the amazing guest authors. Guest videoers? Guest content creators? Whatever you call it.